But I want to ask you ladies, how are you going to finish February strong? So kind of an open conversation, unmute yourself. I just want to hear like, what are you doing to take the next two days? And I, I said this just barely when Mary and I did a magic trick on the West Region Leader page. I don't know if you saw that. That was pretty amazing. But literally, my question is, like, even if you've hit your goal, what are you striving for now? Like, you have two days, and the two days will set you up for March. So let me ask you, what are you doing these last two days to make it great? Come on. Talk to me. Okay, go. Okay, go. So I've been reading the John Gordon book, The Positive Leadership I don't know what it's, The Power of Positive Leadership. Oh my gosh, you guys, if you have not read it, this book is like amazing. I love his book, Energy Bus, and he just speaks to me on like every single level. But so I've been reading this book and it's totally changed my mindset. You know, like I used to be one of those, woe is me, why is my business failing? Why is my leaders leaving for this group and that stupid ML, not stupid, just different, I guess I could say. Um, but I used to have like that kind of lack mentality and that woe is me mentality. And I would go down this downward negative spiral. And um, thankfully I came out of it leaving 2017 behind. And um, like I talked to Brittany about this last week, I believe it was that ever, well, it's not even since reading that book, but I think that book has reinforced everything that I'm doing is I'm working every day. Like it's the first of the month and the last of the month. Like no matter if I hit my goal, no matter where I'm at in my business, like I'm working, like there's no plan B because to me there is no plan B. And you know, I walked away from corporate America two and a half years into coaching and I don't ever plan on going back. And yes, I'm going to get no's. Yes. I'm going to get coaches that quit. Yes. I'm going to get coaches that say that they're showing up that aren't showing up. Yes. I'm going to get people that are in challenge groups that are struggling and that need a little bit more of me than other people. And I, I need to show up like this is my business and I can't depend on anyone else, whether I have coaches that are diamond or coaches that are really rocking the PV, you know, I can't depend on them. I have to depend on myself and being a good leader. And I think me showing up is helping my coaches show up and do the same thing. So that's what I'm doing. I love that you said that first of the day, last of the day of the month, every single day. Love that. Okay. What else? What are you doing? Julian, I know you're going to unmute yourself. I well, I'll, oh, is she oh, going? go ahead. Go ahead. You're okay, Julian. You go. Um, I, it, I'm doing the same thing. Um, I, my business has been transformed in my mindset this month because of um, Grant Cardone. So I just started 10X Rule, but I already finished Be Obsessed or Be Average and Seller Be Sold this month. And I just like, it is just, he's so, that's the kind of mentality I need in my head. Um, so I am still pushing. I would, I want to help two more coaches and I want to help more challengers get into my group, but then also just really like, we have a lot of coaches that are SD4 and just really breathing life into them and telling them not to quit. Cause I don't know. I just am really motivated by like, I know I still have time and I just want to like drop that. And so tonight I'm doing the call that Arnell did, like just doing, um, the four phases of your business tonight and just going to really light a fire to finish the month strong. So I definitely want to see one, two, three, four, five, six of my PS coaches, um, to get them to success club and, and, and watch, watch them crush it. So just really pouring a lot into tonight's call. Perfect opportunity, especially bringing that energy and that excitement to the last two days. I love that. So good. I'm excited for you to present on that. Melissa B., what about you, girl? Um, I actually commented on in our thread about this, but I have felt, so February's are always, and I was telling Cozy this last night, they're always my hardest month. Like, for I don't know what reason, but like I was comparing last February to this February, actually my husband brought it up because he's always kind of looking at finances and he's like, you know, you're doing really well this February compared to last year. And I have felt like I haven't been because for me doing well, isn't necessarily like money for me doing well is how many people I'm helping and how many coaches are getting started in their coaching journey, whatever. And I have just felt such a struggle to, attract business builders. I'm attracting a ton of people wanting to work on their fitness. And I think that's because my body is going through a huge transformation, but I've already been through this physical or this um, financial transformation. And I'm really having a hard time speaking to that. So my focus 
is like really dialing in and helping my coaches succeed because I think being able to share their successes is going to be what attracts people to me and helping them. So I actually just asked Cozy last night, I'm like, will you team up with me? I'm trying to start kind of what we're doing here with coaches on my team who really want this. And I, and I'm, I've like told them, I don't want you to want it because I want you to, I want you to want it because this is what you want. So don't feel obligated. Don't feel like you have to. I just really want to get a focused group and share best practices with them. So I actually was going to come to you guys and see if there was anyone, maybe you guys want to do the same thing and we can swap calls and so they're seeing leaders they're seeing coaches who've been through some of the same things they're going through and they're not just hearing me they're not just hearing coaches on my team that they've heard a million times they're seeing coaches in the network who they look up to and hearing from them so that's kind of my goal the last couple well for one I started that this just yesterday I already have had two girls who like it lit a fire in them they one of my girls who is like an emerald away from diamond just she was at SC zero yesterday. Today she woke up at SC four and she's like, tomorrow I'm waking up at SC eight. And I was like, okay, that's what I need. I need girls who are ready to hustle. I need girls who are like just determined to make it work, to make it happen for them. And so I think just starting something fresh, starting something where they feel valued and that I'm really focused on them, but I don't have, and this is so bad to say, I just don't have time to focus one on one with them. So getting all those girls that want it in a group, I think is really going to help them hustle and help them feel like I'm paying attention to them, you know? But it will typically unite them and then allow them to create the conversation together. So you're not doing all of the work. They're encouraging each other along the way. So yeah. I love that. But like she said, you know, anybody that wants to pair up, do calls, anything like that, please let her know. Um, it's incredible. So yes. Definitely. I love that. I'm plugging that for sure. Okay. Who else wants to go? Whit Small. I'm going to just call you out because I know you're, you stopped your exercise for this. <laughs> I just finished. Um, we are, so we have a kind of SC2, SC4 pod right now, and they are working so hard to get that final person. So we're going through kind of um, all the different things to do in the last day or two to hit that success club that last success club point or that finding that one more person so I encourage them a couple of things go back into your December contacts January contacts they all have a goal to go live tonight with a live invite kind of like the Carl's three by five by one or one by three by five system where it's just a live invite through insta stories and through Facebook um, and just speaking with a story about yourself and the success that you've had and that you're looking to help three people and you want to pay that forward to three people in the month of March and help them on that journey. Um, so they're all pushing hard. Um, so that's how we're kind of finishing the month strong. I need about two more to hit my goal. Um, so yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm right there in the trenches with them ever since the beginning of this month. We've tried some new stuff and it's starting to pan out and I think they're going to feel this momentum build throughout March, April, May, et cetera. So I put them in a pod, uh, long story short, just so they all feel that uh, push together. Love it. Amazing. Thank you, sweetie. So let's kind of shift here, but I just want to bring up the emphasis, like literally the two days and what you do as a leader will literally showcase what is possible for the end of the month and then going into the first of March. Like what Vicky said, treat today like it's the last day and then treat tomorrow like it's the first day. Like continue to do that every single day and get them in the room of it. And then I would just challenge you in two days. So on Thursday, the first, each of you going into your team pages and writing who is working towards helping three people this month, like ask yeah. the stinking question. Okay. It's the whole Christy Lyons thing that she brought up a year and a half ago, but I love it. And literally ask the question. Don't assume that your coaches are going to help people. Don't assume that they're going to be running a challenge group. Don't assume that they're working towards rank. Don't assume, ask the question. Okay. See who responds. So, and then from there you can pair off into different groups, but literally start looking towards that. But you guys have plenty of time 
to allow your teams to finish strong for Team Cup, you have plenty of time to encourage your other leaders that created Team Cup teams, I'll say that 12 times, to finish strong. But literally whatever it takes, like work until the very last hour and make it a great month. Um, and so that's just my whole plug on that because we have plenty of time to do it, but just don't lose faith in the process and really encouraging your leaders until the last minute, okay? And know what you can do as a leader to really get them excited. So let's shift our little energy here. How does that sound? My question for you, and this is what, literally, it is your call, your involvement that's going to make this call. So no pressure. Okay, that's a joke. But we literally, I want you all to participate, okay? But I want to ask the question, how are you getting your coaches to hit diamond? And how are you going, how are you doing it to make it happen faster than the, my, I, I guess my biggest thing is when I get on a team call and it's January and they say, well, by summit or by October, I want to be diamond. I'm like, oh like a literally dagger to my heart. Like, okay, way too long. Right. And I'll even just say, okay, we're after this call, you're going to know that you can do it 90 days, no matter what. But let me ask you that question. Like, how are you getting your diamonds, your coaches to diamond faster? Who wants to start? What's your process? None of you are doing it. I'll go. Um, we, I have a lot of people that are really close and I think for me, I was like, how can I make diamond like going emerald? Like how can, like emerald is like a duh, like not in a bad way, but like that just makes sense to go emerald. But how do you make it something that's not overly complicated? And they just needed a roadmap there. And so I, I think I shared my um, graphics that I made in our group and just them first of all, they already have PS coaches writing it down, which again, I did that. Like, I would be like, Oh, I have this PS coach. I'd put them on each leg and like, see how close I was visually. Um, but just really breaking that down for them. But two, teaching them, like, if you want to make this happen, like it's going to take 10 times asking, not asking. I've actually switched that on our team. It's, you're not asking anyone. You're telling them, teach them how to think, Hey, Hey, have you considered joining me? Nope. Don't say that. Say, Hey, you need to join me. That's what you need to say with conviction. And that's really changed the mindset of our team is like, it's not a question you're asking them. It's not a favor. It's like, no, you're so convicted and so sold on what you're doing. You need to join. But how many times are you telling people that they should join you? Right. And then also just really like gut checking my team. I love gut checks. I'm constantly doing it with them. Um, I'll just say something like gut check are you showing characteristics or signs of, uh, of a coach you wouldn't want on your team? And they're all like, Oh dang, like I wouldn't want someone like that on my team. So I was like, so stop doing that. Um, and then just really being concrete and clear, Virginia and I actually did a power hour together, um, with our downlines last Wednesday. And what we did is we just narrated how we expand our network on Instagram, how we invite, how we send out messages, how we do everything. And so we, I don't know how many people we had on that call, but we, we, yeah, it was a lot, but we just literally broke down what our power hour looks like and exactly what we do to connect with new people. Cause it all starts with connection. And I just felt like that really set the tone and helped our coaches see exactly what it is that we do and how we quote unquote find people, um, which was really helpful for us. You rock. Thanks for going first. Who wants to follow? And I love that you and Virginia paired up to do that. I love that. Okay. So I have nothing to share, but I do need advice from you guys. And maybe some of you guys have hit the struggle bus like me. So I, I have, this has been the same issue for six years, right? I came onto coaching. I was very, uh, I had no self-esteem. I didn't think that anyone was, was going to join me. You know, I used to weigh 268 pounds. So I knew nothing about belief in myself. And I came into this business and, and the first 30 days, I didn't share anything about my journey because I, it was just self-doubt. Like who would want to see me sweating to turbo fire? Who would want to see me do this? Who would want to join me? But 30 days happened, turbo fire, like I couldn't not share my results. I shared my results. Ever since then, I was like balls to the wall, all, all in. Like I loved what Shakeology gave to me. I loved what the community gave to me. I loved what the programs gave to me. So it was like, I couldn't help but share. I couldn't help but share the opportunity. I couldn't help but talk about it. Like it was never salesy to me. It was just because of something I loved so much. And so ever since then, like I find it easy. I find it easy to do this business, right? And all my coaches look up to me and they're like, you make it look so easy. And I, I tell them the exact same things that I do, 
but when they do it, they get overwhelmed and, and then they get discouraged. So I don't know, like I can invite literally all day long. My frog, like to me, I mean, yes, inviting is still my frog, but it's something that I could still do all day long. You know, even after a, a thousand no's, I could still do it because it's fun to me because I feel like I'm being selfish if I don't share this opportunity to other people. But when I try to deliver that to my coaches and share that it's not hard and let go of the fear and all this stuff. They try to do it, but then they get overwhelmed. And I'm like, I keep things simple because I get, I'm too, I too get overwhelmed very easily, but there, there must be somewhere that I'm missing a mark as a leader that they're still getting overwhelmed. So do you guys have any feedback on that? That's a good one. Please jump in. And I know we all experience that, but I'll just, I'll throw it over to Melissa Brewer because I know she's amazing with creating leaders. Yes, you are take the compliment. But what would you say on that? Um, so I think this is something we actually really have struggled with on our team as well in the past year that, that we recognize. And just as leaders, we decided just, we needed to simplify. So I don't really know if I have great advice, but we, I mean, literally simplified. And I feel like our, <clears throat> I don't know if you're talking about new coaches or coaches in general, but, um, just taking it back to the basics. So we redid our new coach training and we, we required every coach to go through it. Um, and so that even the coaches who've been like, I have coaches who've been a coach for two years and they're still an Emerald. And it was because they've like just forgotten what the most important part of being a coach is. And, and that's just the basics of helping people. And they got, you know, it's just easy to get so caught up in all the other um, things that we're learning, like it's just, there's tons of amazing information that shared on the national wake up call in that, um, beach body champions group and in the one by three by five group with Carl. And I just feel like sometimes it gets to be so much that we don't do anything. And so we required all of our coaches, at least I did to go through that new coach training. And like, they literally had to comment. They had to act like a new coach. They had to do the actual like things that a new coach would do. And then all of a sudden it's like they're getting back to the basics and starting over and recruiting coaches who want the same things they want. It's not um, a numbers game anymore. It's a helping game. It's, it's doing it for the right reasons. So I found that something that's really helped my coaches. And I'm also seeing, I don't know if I shared it on this call or if it was a different one, but I'm seeing my newer coaches hitting Emerald way faster than in the old training because it's just so simple and then once they get through that and I actually I don't remember it was one of I don't know I don't think she's in this group but I w was watching a, a recording that Britt did with Z I think her name is and she really laid out these this awesome onboarding that she does with her coaches and I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is after they go through that two week like it's so simple you guys it's crazy it's literally talking to them about like what Emerald is, how to hit Emerald, why we should hit Emerald. Like it's almost like an Emerald training because you can go through so many of the basic and like all the things that they need to know as a coach while teaching them how to hit Emerald and why it's so important and what it's going to do for their business. And then I swear almost every one of my new coaches by the end of the first week of that training, they are an Emerald coach. And then they're so excited because we're shouting them out. We're recognizing them that they're wanting to continue to share. Um, and then I think after they finish that two weeks, that's when I'll have them send me like an overview. Like, how did it go? How do I feel? What, what questions do I still have? And that's when I'll then do a call with them. Cause Z kind of had like a checklist and I really liked it. I don't know if Brit, she can probably share the link if any of you guys haven't seen it, but I think at that point, that's where I'll really start working one-on-one -on -one once they show me they're willing to do the trainings once they show me they're really serious about it. Because I think a lot of times we invest so much time in coaches and then they end up not really being invested themselves and it just is kind of discouraging. So I don't know if that even answers your question, but that's something that I have been doing and is helping me with not only my new coaches, but a lot of my veteran coaches. 
No, that, that's a great idea going through the new coach training because we also have a new coach training. And I think that especially as seasoned coaches, even if they've been Emerald for two years, because I have a plethora of those, I think that they think that they know everything so they don't need to um, do the training. But I think that's such a great idea because I think that, that would also light a new fire under their butts too. Yeah, and Cassie, I just saw your question. And I actually just – I don't have them go through – a challenge group like their training is a challenge group it's in the challenge tracker app so they are checking in with their workouts they're checking in with their shakeology there's a group it's not just me so like I'm not a huge recruiter you guys like I recruit maybe like one business builder a week if that this month it's been like two total and so I team up with my leaders and we all put our, our coaches in there so there's always and it's not a huge group there's like 10 people in there but it's good because it's smaller. They get a lot of attention from us. It's more than one leader commenting and sharing and answering questions. So it gives the leaders a chance to lead. It's just all of it kind of comes together. Um, but I would also say like a lot of my coaches who are business coaches are coming from my challenge groups. So they've been in a challenge group already. They know what that looks like. So they are familiar with it. And if I ever do have one that hasn't, I haven't noticed like a difference in their success compared to others um, because they're just, they think that's the challenge group. And then I tell them like, once you get through this, I'm putting you into my like large lifetime challenge group and you're going to just continue on your journey while you're inviting, sharing, doing all the things that we've taught you in this training. So you do your, um, your new coach training in the challenge tracker app. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we just link the YouTube video, so it just shows. They just click on it. They watch it. They comment. Um, if there's ever more than one, you can put the link in the text, and it will take them to Safari or whatever they're watching it on. Um, and then they just are answering. We always have, like, four questions, three or four questions. Um, and it's just, like, like having them do specific things like who are 10 people that you can talk to. They just write out their first names who are, you know, it's like really simple things. It's not going to take them an hour to do it. Like this is literally like a 10 minute training, take 20, 10, 15 minutes to, to write down it and answer these questions. So it's really applying what they're learning. And then Vicki, I just want to make sure that you saw Julianne's comment too. That's really, really good. So she said, making a system that is less overwhelming, Google streak, whatever, and um, teaching them how to expand network, how to have combos connect, and then how teach them how to invite. So great sound of advice. I love that as well. Great question. Thank you for asking that. I feel like, I feel like we all benefited, benefited from that. And thank you, Melissa, for answering. I kind of called you out on that. So thank you. Um, I want to bring this up because I had an opportunity to be part of a diamond training. So basically last, or excuse me, um, I was asked to speak on a diamond in a diamond group. That's a five week group. And I, I so I started before I went live and with my topic, I wanted to really research what this group was all about. So in this group, the leaders, you know, there's five strong leaders, three of them that you will know well, Melissa McAllister, Daniel Nantoni, and Brianne Wetzel. And so I'm thinking, okay, these are three very strong leaders, and they have two other leaders that are not in the West or not even in the Central. Um, and they pair together with their newer coaches to really get them to work towards Diamond within five weeks. But I loved the expectations that they set within this group. So first of all, of course, they said five weeks to Diamond. They also, um, they made it very clear that it's going to be a lot of time, a lot of commitment and a lot of hustle, but, and every single day, of course, they were going live. They were going, you know, they, these leaders were really creating this environment of where we are doing this together. It's going to happen. Anytime that they did have a diamond pop, they obviously recognized it there, but they also made them sign a contract and to devote to building their business. And I loved that. It's just like, you, you know how it is when you do it for a challenge group or whatever it may, may be. But like having them sign a contract on behalf of devoting to their business. And basically within that, it was just very clear on how, I mean, they did the why, the how, how you're going to make this happen within five weeks, what this means for your business, but they set a timeline on it. And so I don't know if any of you have paired up. I know obviously Melissa and Cozy are in the same, you know, group downline type theme. 
But I don't know if you've ever thought about pairing up with other leaders, getting your leaders to connect, to build relationships together, to really drive an emphasis on this is how long it should take, right? Within that too, they are driving, oh, Sarah, you are so fine. That is horrible. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Um, but literally like what, you know, and then call, call leaders to come in there and drive the attention of what the overall topic is and, you know, say the things that you have been saying, but say it, you know, they say it in a different way. And for some reason it's solid gold, like literally drive on this emphasis of how do we set a timeline around it? How do we drive them all to greatness? And even I just said, you know what, if you hit it, within the five weeks, incredible, amazing job. But this is the thing. If you don't, if you're like one week off, that's okay. Keep going. Where are you at with success club? Like just instilling the, the, the basics and what it means to be doing this every single day. Um, yeah, for sure. I will definitely get you a copy of that. Um, so yeah, so I would just say like, kind of think outside the box, putting the timeline on it, the emphasis, the, um, and this makes me actually think of this incredible book that I keep plugging in. If you haven't started it yet, I'm going to like literally just kind of like shake your little head because it's that freaking good, right? Like it is so good, but what I love this because I'm in the accountability. I've set a goal that I have to have it completely finished. It was my, um, February book. So I have two days to finish 30 pages, which I can do that. But Needless to say, I'm in the tough love and the love and accountability chapter, which I love this because he says, oh, I'm wrong page. Hold on one second. And then we'll go right back to this topic. So love and accountability. So, um, I've worked with and studied leaders for years, and I believe that the positive leaders who are able to create amazing teams and results provide both a lot of love and a lot of accountability. Love and accountability. That is how great teams, organizations, relationships, and results are created. If I had to pick the most important section of the book, it'd be right here. Okay, this is page 140. And, this, and he literally just goes into saying... You have to love your people, but you have to make sure you hold your team accountable on the plan, the process, the principles, and the values of the culture. And then carries on to say, um, it's also about a relentless implementation of the plan. It's about having clear performance goals and making sure everyone knows the goals and knows the data, status, and progress towards those goals. It's making sure everyone knows the plan and what, they, what needs special attention. If you are having a problem, that's okay, but don't keep it a secret. Let's figure it out together and find a solution. If you are failing in some way, you won't be ostracized, but rather you will find the support you need to succeed. Okay? And then literally, last little verse here. If you don't hold people accountable to it, your team won't live and breathe it. But when you love people and hold them accountable, it's amazing how fast things can move in the right direction. Okay. Ah, story type for there for you. But literally, like, just think about accountability, the expectation, the, you know, like, if you give them a set plan, they're going to work towards that. The one thing that I've realized within this business is we just allow people to kind of, like, flounder. Like, it's like, okay, like, this is supposed to be a business on their terms. Yes, but just like that training that I uh, provided from Z was like, if you don't give them the attention, if you don't give them the structure, guess what? They're not going to do it. And when you make them successful, of course, that's when you're successful. But if they fail, you fail. Like you kind of have to just kind of look at this. So I really hope when this call, you're starting to see, okay, the expectation needs to be a little bit higher or a lot higher, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, it's the, Virginia, it's the power of positive leadership by, um, John Gordon. So the creator or the, or the author of the energy bus is what it is. Um, so now let's just go one step further. So I shared with you what I have noticed within a diamond training. What else, like what else has worked for you? Because reminder, you're all strong leaders. You all have been successful in this business. You have all created diamonds, right? So what did you do? Even if you're not successful now, what did you do before that worked for you? And maybe this will be your aha moment. Like crap, I need to get back to that. So what else? We have about 10 minutes left. Breezy, go. So um, the pods have been mentioned. The small groups have been huge in that accountability there. Um, the other thing, um, when Vicki, when you mentioned, um, you know, being in it for so long and diamonds falling off and like, what the heck, um, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, but something that I've done in the past and I'm trying to do more and more is being super transparent about what it takes. Um, yes, it takes hard work, but also it's not that hard. Because I think when there's a, there's kind of a line there, um, that's a super fine line that we need to let them know that yes, this, this is a commitment. This is, this is hard work. It needs to be done. Um, there is discipline involved. 
but I also have three kids. I've coached through two pregnancies, two C-section recoveries, chronic illness, numerous things that have happened in my life. And I'm still making a significant income and growing this business. Like it's, it's, it takes hard work, but it's really not hard. And so I think that we, we tell coaches that and they get this mental block that it's hard. And I've had two diamonds quit this year, guys, and a star diamond quit and like just all this stuff happen, you know? And so I'm in this spot of rebuilding and really needing to foster these diamonds and let them grow. But I think that, you know, letting him know that it's, it's hard, it takes hard work and discipline and I'm doing these things. And, but I love that love and accountability, but anyway, I don't know. That's where I'm at, but. You are freaking amazing. And you are like, you are my hero, but I absolutely love that. It's, it takes hard work, but it's not hard. And it's all about discipline. And you're absolutely right. Like some people have it and some people don't. I love that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, that lit a fire under Vicky. You rock, Breezy. Thank you. <laughs> okay, what else? Just making your, your, mess, your message. Yes is yes. Who else? What else have you done? We can sit here in silence. I'm not uncomfortable. Cozy, I'm calling you out, girl. You grew four diamonds last year. What the heck did you do? I mean, it was mostly me because those three of them were okay. for me. What did you grow? What did you do with those, those other two? Keep going. Just recruited and talked to a million people. Like went back to the basics, like Melissa was saying. It's I mean, I feel like so many times we try to complicate everything and make everything all pretty and fancy and try to feel, try to make people feel like what we do is the most, like, so not like awesome. It is awesome, but not in it's, I mean, most of the time we sit here with no makeup on in our pajamas and just at home and people that have kids, they're just chilling with their kids, you know? So it's just, it's not glamorous, but what the work that we do <laughs> from day to day makes like all the like it builds up and then you get to do these awesome things so i think i just literally you all seen <laughs> yeah i mean i just told people they just they just need to do it i mean friends people that were um just on the fence forever where i coddled them and i have people like super close to diamond now and i just mike always would say that when you start, like Vicky was saying, I had no self-confidence at all. Like I needed Micah to tell me that I could do it because I didn't believe I could. So I think there's a fine line between helping people believe that they can do it and not coddling them because I personally needed to change my mindset through personal development and through just doing it. I mean, that's how we learn is just doing it on special on the days where we feel like crap and don't want to. So we just need to, like for me, I just, I talk to my leaders every single day about just doing the work. There's no special anything, nothing <laughs> special. Like we all do the same stuff that they need to be doing and it just pays off. And over time, just be patient. I don't know. So I feel like it's the message here is literally, it's not that hard. You just have to do it. But I think it really comes behind like the expectation of what you're saying. I feel like Julianne is like blowing up this with such great content. Girl, will you speak? <laughs> Bring it here. I already wrote it. <laughs> no, I think that's so true though. Like, I don't know. I, I think I have a healthy balance of like, I'll, it's like my whole entire team, they get so mad at me, but are so fired up in the same moment. Like they're not mad because it's like, I'm pushing them in the sense in a negative way. It's like, they want to settle for mediocrity and I will never let that happen. Like, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in average thinking. You surround, if you're hanging with me, we're going to another level. But honestly, you guys, I think where that starts is elevating yourself to that next level. If you're like, I always, again, it's like the gut checks where it's like, I, I need to be constantly in front, paving the freaking way. And just looking back with a rope saying, just grab on, let's go. And just, and Trina Gray has always done that for like, I, she's always done that. And I just always admire her. She always just speaks upon like Trina does every week. She does um, a lesson based chat. And I do that with my team now, but literally she just teaches a lesson of what she learned in the business this week in life too. Like not even just in, in the business. And it has nothing to do necessarily with like hitting success club or whatever, but it's legitimately just being able to think better. And so she just shares that with us. And it's so inspiring to see someone like her just like 
struggle and find resilience in her story and be able to become a better coach of it. And I just think like, anytime I find myself frustrated, I always have to look at myself first. Like, okay, like you can't control everybody else and what they do, but you can just freaking hard charge and just believe in people really hard and just show up. Like, so my diamond group, Cassidy is in it. Um, you guys can totally join. I, Virginia, it's not like it's any, there's no magic thing in there, like really, but I promised my team that I would, I'm, I, I have this ability to work my business really hard and still like lead a team. Like I'm not going to lose my business and, and forget to do my own activities, but like I promised them I would show up so hard in there this year. And on a call last night, I said, you guys, I'm showing up hard. Like, like you guys, I can see you're showing up hard and I just want you to know I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. Like I'm going to pour even more into this and, and onto this. And they're like, it's like, we're like preparing for a war. That's kind of how it feels. And like, it's like a brave heart way. Um, but I just think like, anytime I'm frustrated in my business, it always points back to me. Like if I'm frustrated with coaches, okay. Like I can control getting more coaches. Like if I'm frustrated that I don't have coaches hitting success club, well, I can get more success club points myself and just elevate myself constantly anytime I'm feeling stuck. And then the last thing is anytime I tell my coaches, like, if you're feeling stuck, just take action. Anytime I feel stuck where I'm like, I don't know who to message, I expand my network by 20 people because it makes me feel like I'm doing something instead of just sitting there wondering what I should do. And then I'm like, then it's crazy. Like for my coaches who like forget how to recruit. <laughs> Do you ever go through those like, where you're like, I'm so good at getting challenger. Like, where did I lose recruiting? Like, you know what I'm saying? And finding that balance where it's like, just massively focus on telling people they should join the team and like your challengers. And then all of a sudden it's going to click and then it's, you're going to get good at it again. It's just like needing to elevate yourself. But I think what our coaches need to hear is just our transparency of like, are you struggling? Well, sweet. But like, what are you doing about it? Or like, why do you have so much belief in this? Like, I always tie it to like, the coach tells me, I just, um, got a message before this, like I'm going to be at six tonight. And I was like, sweet. Who did you help? Like, that's great. You're at six at club, but like, tell me one person that you helped and tell me why you helped them and how you helped them and why you're excited to help them. Then I go tell my team. I'm like, I'm a part of Ashley's mission. She just helped Whitney. Whitney had a miscarriage two months ago. I've had one before and I want to meet her. Can you connect us? She's not even my challenger, but I would love to meet her. And I think that kind of camaraderie just like freaking blazes trails, like, you know, and just having that enthusiasm. And then there's no magical motivation. There's no like, I want to get myself to do it. Sorry, it's not going to work. Like, you just need to do it. And we can't get frustrated on what our coaches aren't doing. We just have to elevate ourselves and be transparent with what we're doing. I feel like you are the nicest version of Grant Cardone, like the nicest, prettiest version of Grant. Thank you. I have to like read him with a filter where I'm <laughs> like, okay, like Rolls Royce, private plane, great, not like my thing, but like, you know, just like, like the filter of like, let's go. Let's do this. I appreciate that. That's a compliment. No, it's a huge compliment. I and mean, her and I actually joked about that because when she said that she was digging into him, I'm like, I still giggle when he says, I will never go on a date with my wife alone. And I'm like, okay, well, I would like murder my husband. I'm just, okay, I really wouldn't murder, but I would literally slap my husband if he was like, yeah, let's go on a date. And oh, this is a business deal too. And I'd be like, wait, what? Like, that's where I'm just like, okay, there's some things you have to take as a grain of salt, but he's doing you good, Juliana. I say roll with it, girl. That is mad excitement, mad energy, mad love. I love it. Okay. And love and accountability at its finest. So yes, a very special person to be married to him. Yes, I agree. So I feel like, do you feel like you got some great nuggets? Do you feel like you know where to go with this? Do you feel like you're going to take action with this? Do you not feel like you're going to take action with this? Okay. I'm just Can saying, I ask a question really yeah. quick? I know that we're like out of time. No, but. you're fine. I just see a lot of heads nodding. I'm like, okay, if I say a different question, are they going to also nod? So, okay, go. Okay. I love, I like, I love the ideas of all this, but I'm like, I'm really struggling with knowing like, how do I instill this belief in them? Like, what are the action steps they need to do? Like, do I need to find like, or create trainings? Like, I just feel like, is it the trainings that's going to get them to I don't know, like fire themselves up. Cause I love this idea of like elevating yourself because I really believe, and this is something I've been telling my coaches, like your coaches are going to follow your lead. Like 
what you do, they're going to do. And I just am really struggling. And this is something that I've been wanting and trying to figure out is like, how do I get them to believe? Like I am instilling that I'm like constantly like trying to help them believe that. But like, what are things you guys have done that you've seen? Like, is it live power hours? Is it like getting on calls with them? Like what are things that are really working for you guys? Cause I'm, I guess I'm just looking for something new, something, and I don't know if there is anything new, but something different because I feel like they've all been through my things that I normally do. And I want something that's going to like be refreshing to them, be exciting and new and different. So I don't know. So I will um, answer what I'm doing. So um, I noticed the masses that I am able to talk to is obviously on my weekly team calls. And usually I've done like, you know, tough love, which apparently all my coaches love. But then I have this part of me that's super motivating and I'm super sensitive. I'm an empath and I feel people's feelings and like waterworks come, right? I am so transparent, the good and the bad, the ugly. And I notice when I start pouring my heart out, not just on trainings on team calls, but I'm transparent on what's going on with my life and showing them that, you know, life is not all cupcakes and butterflies. You know, people have relationship struggles. People have, like, I don't care how successful you are as a coach, you're still going to have life issues, whether it's your ch child is sick or your radiator went out or you need a new car or you need this or this or your mother-in-law's in town and she's a bee or what, whatever it is. And, and so I, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying. Um, but I, I come to them on my team calls because I don't think that they just need weekly trainings because, you know, like, like you, or I don't remember, I think it was you, Melissa, but um, having new coaches come on and, you know, it's the law of familiarity. They hear the same thing over and over again. But I think that the same thing with trainings, like if they come on for a team call and all they hear is trainings, it gets redundant no matter what you're telling them. So what I've also been doing is on my team calls, I, we, we get real life and I tell them, you know, like I always speak about plan B and I tell them about my story about, you know, like I remind them how I used to work, um, or how I used to be a one family income and it, we weren't even making paycheck to paycheck and letting them know how low I felt. And at that point where I was so scared, I didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel and how I never let that stop me. And I talk about like how I know, like my coaches will come to me and they say they're struggling with, you know, confidence or they're struggling with this or someone's filing bankruptcy or they're having marriage issues or whatever. And so I take that, I, I obviously don't call them out on, on the team call, but I'm like, I know you guys are struggling and, someone you you may feel alone and i talk about this and because not that i am bragging about this but because i've had my fair share of issues i have a lot that i can relate on and so i talk about those things and i'm like but i never gave up and i'm still here and i'm still showing up for you guys every single day and for myself and i think that's my way of breed, breathing belief into them because they see like even when stuff gets tough and people can still do it. It doesn't take a genius. It doesn't take someone that is a nutritionist or has six pack or, you know, it doesn't take someone special. All it takes is heart. And I think that's a huge thing to instill in them, especially when it's on a weekly basis. So, so they can hear that. Cause I don't think that's something that you can ever get tired of. Hey, Melissa, I have an idea that might work too. That's working for us. Um, we do, instead of team calls, um, every other week, we do in, at that same time a power hour call. And I have more attendance on those than those, the team calls because they feel like, like we've all been saying, they know the trainings. They don't need another training. They already can't implement the stuff that they have heard. And so if you can have an hour where, or 45 minutes where they can just implement and you give them one thing to implement. So like last week we just implemented um, the concept of just sending a, sending a donut and sending it to the people who you've been already kind of building that relationship with. And so we started and we just went through like a typical power hour. Everyone pulled out their BAT. So I think it'd be cool. And I sent this to our group message thread um, about leading like a diamond push idea but with a little less training a little more implementation and maybe we can all come together and have you know once a week or three times a week our power hours and you know one of us could lead it 
but share with them what the implementation tip is that day and then sit down with them for those 30 minutes and go, okay, here we ready, set, go. Let's message for these five minutes. Okay, great. Now these five minutes, let's add to our network. Okay, now these five minutes, let's search hashtags that are part of your brand. Um, I think that would be a really cool tracker to see how many diamonds we can grow just by implementation. So it's working for our team. Um, I think the group, our group, you guys, all of us could lead one kick-ass diamond group that way. You rock. That's amazing. I love, and that is one thing I did not see in that other group, not calling those ladies out, of course, but I'm just saying that's one thing I didn't notice was live power hours, but I love that action based because it is one of those things. They listen to the national wake up call. They're going to get a new, new training. And it's like this constant squirrel and constantly like, Oh, you know, I now need to change all this up. I need to do all this different rather than putting them into action. So wet small, you rock. Thanks, hon. Melissa, what are your thoughts? Anything else you need? No, I think that is like exactly what my girls need. That's kind of like what I need. <laughs> like, yeah. and I say that like really genuinely because I, this is something I've, I've really struggled and I'll just be really honest with you guys. I've really struggled with team calls. I've really struggled with team power hours and it's because I feel like my life is so chaotic, but if I just do it. If I just get focused and I invite them to do it with me, not only are they going to grow, but I'm going to grow and I'm going to get my business back into like a state of calmness, I think, because, and I know that a lot of you guys have babies too, but like now that my baby just turned nine months and I feel like I'm finally at a place where like she's taking a nap right now. Like, and I was telling Jackie earlier, like, I admire her so much because that's, like, the stage of life I'm in. I feel like I can't go anywhere without a baby on my hip, and it's just so hard to sit and work. And I know, like, my husband is really supportive. So, and tell me if you guys struggle with this, but, like, I just have such a hard time getting my coaches to attend these things because those are the type of people that I attract because that's my life and that's what I talk about. Like, you know, we're all working just in the cracks and whenever we can, and I don't know. What do you guys, what do you guys think about all of that? For sure. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think these ladies are all nodding as well that it needs to obviously be that action oriented, that action based. Um, but obviously the real, the raw and, you know, being able to do as much as you can do, even with the baby on the hip and now you reappeared. Okay. You froze there for a minute. That was weird. Okay. This Definitely. Okay. And it looks like, so Whit Small, you put that in the message, right? And majority of everybody wants in. So you're probably gonna have to pot out and figure out how to run this best. So figure that out. And you can obviously put it within our group thread if you feel inclined to do so. Um, yes. Something okay. that helped for me real fast is scheduling events in your team page. Um, so every best practice call we have on Tuesdays, I always schedule um, in our team page. And so they get the notification. So then they don't forget about it. But then also on Sundays, we do a live power hour really early in the morning, like 5am my time. Um, and then 7am central standard time just to get, so I was like, work your business in one hour and get out. Like you should show up every day in some way, but like then get out. And then I just like navigate that, but I, I schedule it on an event page. So then they get those reminders, but then I post in it um, about a half hour before and then 10 minutes before. And then as soon as it's starting, so then they get four notifications, like as it goes and we have really good attendance. Sometimes it just takes a minor tweak. It's not that they don't want to get on, but sometimes like they're not used to it or like, but I think also like everyone needs a why. So it's not like, like, for example, um, something hit me this last week where it's like they're, they have their vision, but they never shared it with their spouse. And I thought that was so weird. Or like, Every time they hop on a power hour, they're not telling their power or their spouse why they're jumping on that Zoom. And I'm like, tell them, tell them you're getting on a power hour and this is what you're learning. This is who you're helping and this is why you're on it. And then they're going to be more in tune with you getting on the calls. I don't know. Just, it always takes a little tweak. You rock. No, I love that. 
So I feel like so much great content. Do you feel like Melissa that you can now like, you know, cut the kind of the implementation step of it, but I feel like the four notifications, the, you know, the reminders, and yes, it is hard because people work different schedules, but kind of maybe find some pockets of time where you can do one earlier morning when you can do one a little bit later at night, like, and just see, you know, I mean, obviously this is the thing. Just remind yourself, I'm building this life by design. I'm building this business by design. So you're not like, I had a one coach who's like, Brittany, I really miss sleeping in with my husband. And I said, so sleep in with your husband. Like you, you are, you know, I mean, you are privileged to, you are more than welcome to like, you got to find what's going to work, but maybe for this time being like, find something that will work within your schedule and, you know, and plan that. But I love the fact that you asked, how am I going to implement this? Because we can all talk about this all day long, but if you don't have the actions to take it and move it forward, you'll never yeah. do it. So thank you for, for asking that. That's a, that was a solid question. Okay, ladies, long time together. I really appreciate you. Go finish these last two days strong. We'll have a follow-up um, content uh, message topic next week, and then the following is Jeff Hill. So we'll just continue to build upon this, but I appreciate all of you staying on here and have an amazing day, okay? Thank you. Bye, ladies.